Bacula Enterprise Edition to the rescue. Welcome to Bacula Enterprise Trial Scenario 5, where we'll show you how to add a Windows client and then back it up. The first step in the process is to install the Bacula file daemon on Windows. The installer files for all of the supported file daemons for the trial are found directly on the trial VM under Clients. You can open this link in a browser and then browse directly to the Windows installer files. The largest of these files is the file daemon, so click on that to begin the install process. The installer will launch with the usual Windows warnings, and you can decide if you want to trust this and run it on this machine. Assuming you do, you can click through and select all the defaults for the installer, and even leave the fields blank where it asks you for the director name and password. While the installer runs, open BWeb in your browser on your Windows client. Using BWeb from the Windows client machine will make it easy to copy and paste the configurations directly into the Windows file daemon configuration file. In production, you'll probably be automating this or deploying these via one of our deployment scripts. When the file daemon installer completes, you can decide to view the README or not and click Finish. Then continue to log into BWeb with the default username and password of admin admin. You may see some errors about the self-signed certificate or about browser compatibility, but these can safely be ignored. Now we'll enter the BWeb configuration mode by clicking Configuration, Configure Bacula. And then once in configuration mode, click on the Add a New Client Resource Wizard. In order to have the correct information for this wizard, I'm going to bring up a command prompt and run ipconfig, which will allow me to copy and paste the host name and IP address directly into my config files. It's not necessary for the host name to match the client name in Bacula, but it's a good practice. It's also best practice to tack on the dash fd at the end of the name so that we know which component we're looking at in a log file. There's also an optional field to add a description for this file daemon. Next we select the operating system type to set some meaningful defaults and enter the DNS name or IP address for the client we're adding. You can also change the password that will be used to contact this file daemon if you want, or you can use the random password generated by BWeb. The next step is where we would configure transport encryption for this client if we were using it. And finally, we've got the template created for our client configuration file. Next, copy this information to the clipboard and open Notepad as an administrator. Within Notepad, open C, Program Files, Bacula, bacula-fd.conf. This is the default Bacula configuration file that was installed by the installer. What we'll do is copy and paste what we've created in BWeb directly into this file and save it and close it. The next window in BWeb gives us a few options such as deploying the client via script or going through the process to create a new job. But for now we'll just click edit, verify everything is correct, and then save it. You can see the new client now in your client listing. However, as always, we need to go back to our work set to commit this to production if we're happy with it, and then reload the director to ingest the changes into the running configuration. Now the director is aware of the new client, and the new client has the correct configuration. Next, we need to either reboot the Windows client or simply restart the Bacula service to take in the changes we made to the configuration file. Open the Windows Services Manager, find the Bacula service, and restart it. Please also verify that it's set to start automatically on boot. Once the file daemon service is restarted and running, we can close all the open windows, and the next step will be to configure the Windows firewall to allow connections to the Bacula file daemon. There are many options here. The Bacula file daemon listens on port 9102, so you can add a rule that allows that. You can disable the Windows firewall on this secure network if you feel comfortable with that. Or you can follow along and do what I do here, which is to change settings and add the Bacula file daemon as an app allowed through the firewall. Click Add Another App, and then click Add and browse to the Bacula file daemon executable. And then also make sure you choose the correct network type that matches the network you're currently connected to. Once these steps are done, the file daemon should be installed on the director and listening for connections on the Windows client. Now we'll switch over to BWeb running in Firefox and click on Configure, Configure Bacula to go into the configuration mode. 
From here, the Add a New Backup wizard will take us through all the steps to add the new backup job. For this demo backup job, I'm going to back up the user's directory on this computer, so I'll give the job a name that matches that. I'll also add an optional description describing the job. You can also choose a job template or a job def here to import some default settings. So for example, I want to write this to ddupe storage, so I'll use my backups to ddupe template. The next step is to select the client for the backup job, and I'll select the newly created Windows 10 demo FD. The next step is to choose a file set, which is the list of files we're going to back up. In this case, we need to create a new one because we don't have an existing Windows file set, so we'll click Now, which will take us into the file set creation tool. From here, we'll give the file set a name, and since we're backing up the users directory, we'll call it Windows 10 Users. And then we'll click the plus to add an include list, which is the files that will actually be included in the backup. You can browse directly to the client, and you should connect to it and see all the files that Bacula can see on that client. From here, we're going to add users, but you could also back up the entire machine by clicking the forward slash. Next, we have the options window, where we have a lot of different choices for how Bacula will behave when it's backing up this file set. In this case, we're just going to choose two simple options, one of which is to create a SHA-1 signature so that we can verify that the files are all correct, and we're going to enable both sides deduplication so that we can try to do deduplication on the client side before sending the files to the storage daemon. Now you can confirm your file set options, and if you're backing up the entire Windows machine, click Set Default Windows Options to exclude some things like the page file. Now we can select the new file set we created for this job and move on to the next window. Here we're setting up where we're going to send this backup job. We pulled these in from the defaults earlier, so it's going to our correct deduplicating storage. And next you'll select the schedule for the job. Here we'll leave it as manual because we want this job only to run when we want to. Finally, you can review all the job settings here. Note that the settings that have been pulled in from the job defs will be highlighted in blue and everything else will be in black. After clicking save, our new job should show up in our job listing. Now click on workset to return to the workset page so we can review the changes that will be made and then commit them and reload the director. This completes the addition of our new backup job for the client we've just added. Now click on Bacula Enterprise in the upper left of the window and that will return us to the Bacula Enterprise main page. From here, clicking on Jobs and Define Jobs will allow us to select our new job, make any necessary modifications, and then run the job. For this new job, we don't need to change anything. You can see the default level is incremental, but because this job has never been run, it will run as a full backup job anyway. The job should start from here, and it'll take a few minutes to run. When the job is done, BWeb will automatically refresh with the job completion screen you see here. Here you'll see the statistics for the backup job, and most importantly, you should see Backup OK. That concludes Scenario 5 and shows you the manual process for adding a new client to Bacula and adding a new backup job. Thanks for watching and for following along.